Uh, okay, so now we're going to begin with the next part, um, which is going to be running FastQC. Well, we got to download the files. We got to run FastQC to find out the quality of the reads that we're going to be working with, um, and then trim. And we might not get to all of that in this video, depending on how long it takes. Um, but yeah, so we'll first jump into kind of what I'm using here as far as like how, how this is all going to progress. Um, this is my GitHub page and what I'm running through now is part of a class that I had taken in the fall of 2019. So here we have the last commit in the end of November for this RNA seq uh, run. But a little bit of background is that like I had mentioned in the last video, these mice were exposed to ionizing radiation. Um, that was their treatment. And then B cells and non-B cells, but we're gonna only look at B cells um, from the spleen were extracted and the RNA was sequenced uh, for the whole transcriptome. And we wanted to identify um, if mice had P53 knocked out when the ionizing radiation was, was applied. Um, for the different kinds of mice. So this is actually from a paper uh, that is on PubMed. Um, and I can put all these links in the description for you guys if you wanna check it out. But this is looking at genome-wide analysis of P53 transcriptional programs um, and B cells upon exposure to uh, genotoxic stress. So it's gonna be the ionizing radiation. And we'll go through and make some of our own conclusions um, when we're done with this and the run for this, the uh, SRA, or the sequence read archive, um, has all of their, their sequences on here and it's a lot of space. So depending on how much storage you have, I have a two terabyte um, SSD that I have as my boot drive, but I only have 600, 600 gigs left. Um, but anyway, depending on how much of that is left, you can go ahead and download um, the reads or you can just do a couple of them if you just wanna follow along. Um, and then here is another important part. So we have our reads that we wanna analyze. Um, that's from the sequence reader archive, but we also need something to map our reads against once we get to that point. And it's just good to have throughout the entire process. Um, and it takes a really long time anyway, uh, but these are mice, so mus musculus, and then we're gonna go with build 37.2. So if you right click this, you can copy the link location or, or copy where it's at, and then we'll, we'll come back to that um, when we get a little bit further along here. Uh, but yeah, so the, uh, all of this is basically following what I had done for that class. There's a lot more in here if you're running on a cluster um, doing jobs uh, and all that kind of stuff. But first off, what we'll do is we'll talk about how to get the, um, the genome and the GFF and all, all the files associated with a mouse uh, genome downloading. So if we go to build 37.2, you wanna copy that link location. And then what we can do is come back to our Linux and we can do w get and then paste that in and and let it let it start downloading. So I actually have this already downloaded and it takes an incredibly long time to do. Um, see if I'm in the right folder. It looks like it. So we can do ls and look at what we got here. So here is that that download. Um, it's 23 gigabytes itself. Uh, and it's compressed. So when you're done with that, it's gonna expand, um, get to unzip it and then expand the file system or the file structure to get all these inside. And there's things like uh, the annotation, there's the genome, there's some index files in there too. There's a lot in this package, but it's all um, important in one way or another. Um, but we'll only use the GTF file and the genome. So we'll make our own index when we run star uh, and um, maybe even bow tie if we get that far. So 
That is downloading the, the genome in the GFF or GTF file. Uh, the next thing that if you're going to follow along with the um, video or if you're going to follow, just run through the GitHub is we're going to have to install a, another package in Conda. So what we'll do is we'll do Conda activate to get into our environment. Um, and it's going to be our tutorial environment. Okay, so now we're inside of our tutorial environment again. Um, and what we're going to have to install is SRA tools. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to pull directly from that SRA page. So as this is downloading, let's go back. Um, yes. Well, I'm just slow. So let's go back to our SRA. So the only files that we're going to analyze here, like we saw on um, my little notes at the beginning, they have B cells and non B cells. But what we're going to do is we're only going to look at the B cells. So uh, if you look at this, this column, B cells from spleen. One way to get the entire list uh, is to go through and select all of those files or all of the runs that say B cells from spleen and there should be 12 of them. It's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So once those are selected, the ones that you want, you can go up here under the selected and click accession list. And I'm gonna, uh, yeah, we'll save it. Save and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag that onto the file structure so it's now under our Linux. So if we go in here, we type ls. We have right here, SRA ACC list. And we can do head of that list. And we get all 12, well, it's not gonna show 12, but it's in this file, there's all 12 of them um, that we had selected on the previous SRA page for B cells from spleen. We could also do uh, yeah, VI, SRR, go in here, and then there's all 12. So you can see 12 lines. Um, so let me get out of here. So now that we have our list, uh, we can individually go through and down, well, yeah, so we have our SRA, SRA tools. We can individually go through and down each one of them. So one way to do that is fastq dump gzip. So we wanna download them as zipped files so they don't take up so much space. And then split files. So we want our forward and reverse to be two separate files. And that'll be useful when we go to trim and then we just got to put in whatever run we want. So here I have SRR 2121.770 here, uh, fast Q dump, easy. And then you can go ahead and run this. This is also going to take a really long time. So what I do generally is run multiple, multiple of them. And due to just personal preference, I do it this way. So what the and at the end is going to do is it's going to tell this command to run in the background. So if we launch this right now, I'll be, continue, I'll be able to continue working um, in this Linux terminal while this job is running. If I didn't put this in the background, this command would tie up this terminal and it would make it really difficult to keep working unless I opened up another one, in which case then it really wouldn't matter. But uh, the way that I do it is this, then I can go through later type jobs. So if you type jobs and you have those with the and sign running in the background, it'll list them here. And then you can see if they're still running or if they're done. Um, another way to do this is to use um, parallel, so you can do cat 
and then SR, our list, and then we're gonna pipe, pipe that to parallel. And I'm not gonna download them because I already have them. You can see here we have our raw reads folder. So I already have all of them downloaded, but uh, to do it with parallel, what you could do is um, parallel and then put it in quotes, fast Q dump. And then we want them zipped, G zip. And then we want to split the files again from four or two forward and reverse. And then SRR 2121770. Oh, actually, since we're gonna pipe this in, each one of these is gonna give or get its own job here. In which case we would, these are the not parentheses and not the square brackets. They're the more curly ones. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna feed each one of these into fastq dump D, uh, gz split files. That's what this means. So every single line here is gonna go into one of these jobs. And then when that's all done, you'll have a folder that looks like this. So you're gonna have your 770 like we had typed before, and then one for forward and two for reverse. So now we have our paired end reads um, that we can continue to work with. Uh, so we can go back and I always keep my folders with the raw reads in one and then trimmed reads in another one. And just every single time I do something, I make a new folder. It can get kind of cumbersome. Like you can hear me hit the tab button for raw, but there's raw, fast QC, raw reads. I'm not sure what the raw to tiff is, but. So if we have raw, fast QC, just a lot of beeping. Um, but so now let's pretend that we have all of these downloaded or because they are downloaded for me, but for you. Uh, and then what we need to do now is install um, or what we can do is install a multi QC. And what multi QC is going to do is it's going to make our fast QZ QC output a lot more manageable. So let's do conda install multi QC. And then we'll let this get all hunky dory. And then in addition to multi QC, um, we can install Trimomatic now or we can wait. Let's get fast QC going. And then when that's done and over with, we can install Trimomatic. So this is almost done. <laughs> okay, so now we have our Multi QC installed, we can go ahead and launch our fast QC. And since I have my larger processor, it can feed it all 64 threads to try to get as many of those reads that we had saw before, try to get as many of these done as possible. And so if you have an eight core or my old computer was eight core, just type eight here and then it'll allocate those cores to different reads and it'll run through them by itself. That way you don't have to go through and type in fastqc for this read and then fastqc for this read file. So then we'll go to our see reads file, uh, reads folder, and then we'll tell it all of the fastq.gz files. So fastq.gz all of them in this folder, and we can put a, a period here too if we want. All of them in this folder go through and run QC. So 
something that I did forget to do is we want to make an output folder and we'll call this raw fast QC. I already have it. Uh, LSCD raw fast QC. We'll just delete all those files on the Windows side. There we go. So now LS didn't return anything, so it's empty. Um, let's just delete the folder actually, then we can make a new one. Okay, so we'll make a directory, mkdar, and then we'll call it raw fast qc. So now if we do ls, oh, we're inside the folder. We've got to step up. Not exactly sure where that was made, but we'll do it again. So we'll make a directory and we'll call it raw fast QC. So now compared to when we didn't have it and we have now, we have our raw fast QC. So now we can feed the output of fast QC into that folder. And then we'll have all of these that we could run multi QC with. So we'll do fast QC and then threads. And then we'll look at the raw reads folder and we want to tell it to all the fastq.gz files in this folder. And then we're going to feed that output into raw fastqc. So we'll press enter and now it should start all of those raw reads that we had. Can't see my sliding. Oh. All of our reads, so each one of those will now get started. Whereas if you have eight cores, it'll start eight of them and then it'll run through and then start another eight, run through, start another eight. So we'll, we'll go ahead and wait for this guy to finish up. But so now that our FastQC is done, we can go ahead and ins uh, move on to um, running multi-QC. So we can actually do CD and then we'll go right into that FastQC folder. And we can type multi-QC and then just a dot. So it's going to say, look for everything in this folder and try to combine it to make it look pretty. So it found 48 files and it's zipping the HTML together. There's 24 reports. And then now we have the multi-QC HTML. We'll go ahead and open that up. We'll go ahead and open up one of the regular QC reports and the multi QC, and then you can see the difference between the two. Um, so we gotta go here, here we go. So here is one of the normal um, fast QC reports. So this is for uh, 21, 21, 770 forward reads. And there's a lot of information here, Sanger and Illumina, uh, Illumina reads. See all the quality, um, a lot that's really high quality per base. This might be due to adapters and we can remove that um, when we trim or it just maybe the first 
handful of reads, first 10 or so are just bad. Uh, but we only have 50, 51 base pair reads anyway. So hacking that off, we're already down. Um, before trimming quality, we're already down to 41 reads. Um, so that's something to keep in mind too. But nothing too alarming from all this other stuff. We have some overrepresented reads, which trimming can take care of as well. Um, doesn't look like we have any adapter content, which is really good. We're still going to feed in the adapters, like I had mentioned, with um, the Trimmatic having to move them to the working directory. Still going to do that just in case. But if we go to the multi-QC report, so this is everything. So these are all, all 24 files of the 12 different runs, um, forward and reverse. You can see here there's a lot of duplicates in 2121, 770. Um, handful of other ones. I don't know why it's so faint, but there's a lot of duplicates here as well. And that shows up later uh, when we remove or when we trim. That shows up. We can see large variation of sequence counts. Uh, there's some duplicates. Some of them don't have very many, and other, others have a lot of duplicates. 89 looks like it has some issues, some potential issues with it. Otherwise, so this is a really, this makes these look way better and more consumable. Um, see here there's a lot that had per base uh, content is really bad per tile some tiles might be bad too um, but overall the multi QC makes consuming your your quality control um, much better so working directory pointed it into raw fast QC now that that is done let's switch back We'll have to install Trimomatic, so we can do conda install Trimomatic. I know in the cluster, the solving environment and collecting package metadata takes a long time, and it takes a really long time on personal computer too, and I'm not sure why. But, so here we have our Trimmatic is now installed. I'm going to actually back up into our working directory again. So we'll have to make another folder. So if we're going to, if we're going to trim, we'll have to make another folder. So we'll call this trimmed reads. How about it's so now, there we go. So we have a raw reads, raw fast QC and then trimmed reads. And we'll be able to point trimmatic to, to that. So like I mentioned before, we're gonna pull our adapter sequences, true seek adapter sequences to our working directory. And then it'll be a lot easier to point um, Trimmatic to that versus having to type in the really long path. So I'm going to do environments, and then this is now our tutorial environment. So tutorial environment, uh, Trimmatic. Oh, share, share, share. Then Trimmatic. Adapters, true, seek, three, paired, end. Two and FASTA. And then, so that's the file we want to move. And then dot is going to say move it right here, right to where we are, which is going to be in the P53 folder. So there we go. So now if we do ls again, oh, I must have already had it in here. Well, let's delete it and show you again. Okay. So now we don't have our true seek. And we want to copy our adapters 
and then the dot means right here. So now ls, and our true seek is back. So now our adapter sequences are right where, where we want them to be. So now it's time to run Trimomatic. Trimomatic, and this is, it makes my computer um, not hurt. It makes my SSD hurt more. It maxes out my SSD, but we go Trimomatic. And then since we have our, um, where's an easier place to see this? Since we have our 771 HTML and we have our 772 HTML, we have forward and reverse. So when we come down to Trimomatic, we wanna do is we wanna tell it, we have paired end reads. So PE, if we only had one direction, so 770 underscore one, and that was it, or it might even be just 770 underscore or 770 dot HTML or however it is, that would be single end. And here we would type SE, but we have paired end reads and then we're going to give it threads and Trimomatic doesn't seem to peak more than five, four or five threads. So if we give it five threads, we should be, should be good. And we can do reads, uh, raw reads. So we're gonna go into our raw reads folder and then say we wanna do 770, 21, 20, 21, 21, 770 underscore one. And then we have our zipped file. And then, so this is forward. We want raw reads, SRR 21, 21, 770 underscore two. So now we wanna reverse and we'll tell it that we want all of the output files. So base out, we want to start with trimmed reads and then SRR 2121770. So what this is gonna say is any output file that Trimomatic makes, put it in, um, yeah, it should work. Uh, any output file that Trimatic makes, we want the base file name output or the, the base output, yeah, the base file name of the output all to have trimmed reads slash SRR 2121770. And what this is going to do is just say go in this folder and then start all the files, the actual files with SRR 2121770. And then we have our base file out. So now we'll go into where moving that file, in my opinion, moving the adapter sequence file um, makes it a little bit easier. So if we do Illumina, clip, and then TrueSeq. So if you hit tab after TRU, it'll automatically fill that in. And that's because this file is in this location. It makes it easier instead of having to type this, in right here, we can just do the short the short name, um, but we don't want a space, so we'll give it two, thirty, ten, and then two, and then we want to give or tell it to keep both reads. So we'll do keep both reads. And so keeping both, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do a really short leading. So this means in the uh, fast QC that we had seen before, let's bring that back up. And the fast QC that we were looking at before here, right off the bat, we're just gonna say, get rid of the first three reads. And that's going to um, allow us a little bit more control. We could, if we knew that the rest of the reads had really good quality, uh, I think this is actually supposed to be 30, no, 36 comes later. Uh, the, we knew the reads had really decent quality. We could say remove all 10, but we don't want to throw away too much information. So we'll get rid of leading three, and then we'll do trailing, ah, trailing, and we'll also get rid of three there. And then since our reads are really short and we're starting to now look at the quality of them. 
we want to set a min length. And that min length for us is gonna be 36. So if any of our 51 base pair reads have more than, oh, what is that, 15 removed, we're just gonna say, don't, don't use that read or don't keep that read because now we've lost, was that 33% of the information, 35% of the information. Um, so we have our mid, min reads, a uh, min length, sorry. And then um, in this case, we'll give it an and, and then, oh uh, no, we'll say keep the output. So two is gonna be whatever is printing here. Uh, and then feed that into our trimmed reads folder. And then we want to make a log. So MultiQC will use all the output that's printed when this works, right? We'll use all that output to make a nice report like it did for FastQC. So we'll call this one SRR2121770 and then trimming log. So what this is going to do, we're going to keep the forward and reverse single ends. Uh, so if a forward read maps, but reverse doesn't, it's going to keep that. Um, and for seven SRR2121770 forward and reverse. So we'll have five outputs, I think, from this. We'll have the forward paired, forward unpaired, reverse paired, um, reverse unpaired. So that's four sequence files, and then we'll have this log output. And this also takes a really long time. So an option here would be to do um, cat, and then our file with our reads. So SRR accession list, we'll give it the pipe, and then parallel, so dash J, is gonna tell Parallel how many jobs to run. So let's say we wanna do four jobs at a time. So it's gonna be, so the first ones that'll kick off are 770, 771, 774, and 775. And then when say 770 is done, it'll start now 778. So we'll give it dash J and we'll say four jobs. And then in our quotes, we'll do trimmatic, paired end, threads, five, raw reads. And then like last time, we're going to have to put in our, our squiggly or squirrely brackets. Wherever we have one of those accession numbers, or SRR numbers, show up. So in, in this case, wherever we wrote SRR 2121770, um, is where we're gonna want to put in just those empty brackets. So that'll say whenever we have a file or whenever something from our SRR list is shoved in, it'll show up here. So the first one in our SSR list, SRR list is 2121770. That'll show up here, SRR 2121770 here and so on. So what we can do is run this and see if it works. Ah, ha, ha, we forgot a quote. Parallel is not found. Ah, conda install parallel. It's installed in the main conda, but not this one. There we go. So now what we should be able to do, we'll make this easier, put it all in one line. So parallel is gonna run everything between the quotes, hopefully, if it worked right. Mm -hmm. I can just space here now that I see that. Let's see. So we do see all of our threads lighting up. Um, the files are still empty though. So hopefully. Let's see here. Just maxes out the SSD. But. Um, all of our logs are in that folder, so we can do 
uh, control Z. So Z is going to stop what we have running, but then we can do BG and one. So our job here is number one, and we have uh, number one here. So that's gonna say run in the background job number one. So there we go. So now we can type jobs and we can see that, let's make this prettier. So if we look at jobs, we can see here we have one job running and it's job number one and it's still going. So it's good. Um, but we can look at our trimmed reads folder. Ooh. It's not let me trimmed reads. There we go. Ah, CD trimmed reads. So here we have our first four that we had talked about started. So we have 770, 771, 774, and 775. And we have forward paired, forward unpaired, reverse paired, reverse unpaired, and then our log file. So there's five. And we have paired, unpaired, paired, unpaired, log, four, for all four. So we have, as we mentioned, four of these jobs that are taking five threads running at a time. And the reason why in the, the CPU window here, don't see all of them uh, is because the SSD, or I see all the threads lighting up is because of the SSD. But, so I'm gonna let this run. And when it's done, um, I'm go ahead and move on to the next step. But that's it for now.